In this lecture, we're going to talk about design of reinforced concrete members for torsion. We are going to follow the recommendations of ACI 318, and those can be found in the chapter for shear and torsion, chapter 11, specifically after section 11.5, which is uh, dedicated for torsion. First of all, let's review some fundamental aspects. What is torsion? So basically, torsion occurs when a member, like a beam or a column, is subject to a moment which is in a plane parallel to the cross-section. In this drawing here, you can see a beam. Let's say that beam is supported or restrained at the end one right here see there is a fixed support and there is a moment here a torsional moment applied at end two when that moment is applied the cross section at two tends to twist around the axis of the member like it's shown on the top right and you can see that what occurs is a rotation of the cross section on its own plane. This is different than bending, right? Where the moment is perpendicular to the cross section, the moment plane. In this case, the moment plane is parallel. And obviously the same equilibrium conditions have to hold. So if you apply a moment at end two, you're going to have to have a reaction moment at end one that is equal and opposite. So basically that is what torsion involves. It involves rotation on a plane parallel to the plane of the cross section. Let's review some aspects related to mechanics of materials. Probably the simplest type of section to analyze for torsion are thin walled sections. So these are sections in which you basically have material around the perimeter with a relatively small thickness with respect to the size of the cross section. We call that thickness T. And to understand how that section resists torsion, we have a concept called shear flow, which is basically the amount of shear per unit length that is going around the perimeter of the cross section. This shear flow is a force per unit length because it's the shear stress multiplied times the thickness of the member of the cross section. We call that shear flow Q, and so Q is tau times T, T again being the thickness. And so if we look at a differential section of that thin wall section right here on the top right, you're going to see that if we take a differential length of the perimeter, which we're going to call dp. The total force is the shear flow, q, multiplied times dp. And the moment induced by that force is q times dp times r. Right. That creates a small torsional moment like this. And in order to get the total torsional moment, we have to integrate that quantity around the perimeter, right? So it's, it's an integral that is around the perimeter of the cross section, right? So the total torsion is going to be equal to the integral of QR dP. For a perfectly circular cross-section, that simplifies to a quantity that is qr times 2 pi r, which is the circumference 
of a circle. Q is tau times t. And if we rearrange terms, we see here that pi r squared is the area enclosed by the center line of the perimeter thickness. This is shown here in blue, and we use the term A naught. So the total torsion is equal to 2 times tau times the thickness times A naught. From there we can solve for tau and say that the shear stress along the wall thickness is equal to T, the torsional moment, divided by 2 A naught thickness. And we get this nice expression here that is probably familiar to you from mechanics of materials. How does this relate to the design of reinforced concrete members? Well, ACI 318 idealizes the behavior of concrete cross-sections as thin-walled members. It's an equivalent model that is used or an analogy in order to simplify the calculations. So basically what the ACI does is it neglects all of the concrete in the core of the section. So it neglects all the contributions coming from the core of the cross section and it only accounts for the contributions on the thickness around the perimeter. That thickness is selected as three quarters of the enclosed area by the perimeter of the cross section divided by the perimeter of the cross section. This works out as a thickness. You can see because this is area divided by length. So you get length, you get a thickness. And the area enclosed by the center line of that perimeter is two thirds of the area enclosed by the outer perimeter. So if we take these two equivalent terms and substitute them into the formula that we've just derived, this formula right here, t divided by 2a naught t, and select the cracking shear stress as four times the square root of f prime c, we can compute what the ACI calls the cracking torsional moment, which is the torsional moment that, if applied to a cross section, would create cracking along the length of the member. Substituting these expressions, we find, right, so A naught, two thirds ACP, and equivalent thickness, three fourths of ACP divided by PCP. We find this expression right here, that the cracking torsional moment is equal to four square root f prime c, acp squared divided by pcp. What ACI does is it says, if your torsional moment is less than a quarter of the cracking moment, torsional effects can be neglected. So this can be found in, in section 11.51 of ACI, and this is what ACI calls threshold torsion. So it's basically the threshold for which you can neglect torsional effects on your member because the shear stresses are expected to be so low that the member can resist distortion 
without the need for any additional reinforcement. So this you want to compute first, right? Before you do any torsional design, you want to check this number first because if your ultimate torsional moment is less than this, you're done. No need to do anything particular in order to resist torsion. Uh, one more detail is that if you are dealing with a concrete section, which is hollow, then the value of ACP that you're going to use in the formulas is going to be equal to the gross sectional area of concrete. That is, the area of concrete that is um, actually present in the member. So you're not going to take the perimeter, the area enclosed by the perimeter, you're going to take the actual concrete gross sectional area. Okay? So again, if your ultimate torsional moment is less than phi square root f prime c, ACP square divided by PCP, torsional effects can be neglected. ACP is the area enclosed by the perimeter of the cross section and PCP is the area is the perimeter of, of the cross section. Let's do an example. So say we have a concrete member with a cross section with a base of 12 inches and a height of 24 inches. So ACP is the area enclosed by the perimeter, which is 12 times 24. That comes out to 288 inches square. The perimeter is 2 times 12 plus 2 times 24. That comes out to 72 inches. Let's say that F prime C is 4,000 PSI. Then threshold torsion is 0.75 that's phi, times square root of F prime C divided by a C, times ACP squared divided by PCP. That comes out to 56,644 pound inches, which is 4.55 kip feet. So basically this means that if you were using this member, let's say on a cantilever beam like this, supported at this end here and you had a load an ultimate load PU of two kips let's say and this load was placed with an eccentricity of two feet with respect to the centroid of the member this load would create an ultimate torsional moment of four kip feet which is less than 4.55 so in this case torsional effects can be neglected and this cantilever beam with this load eccentric two feet would have to be designed for shear and bending moment, but it would automatically be able to resist distortion effects without any significant cracking or significant stresses that would necessitate additional reinforcement. If this is not true, well, let's say this load wasn't, let's say, two kips, but 10 kips then the ultimate moment would be larger than the threshold moment and we would need to reinforce it specially for torsion. How to do that is going to be the subject of the next lecture.